Hey everyone, welcome to my first video of 2018. Today's video, as you've seen in the title, I'm talking about the Gear S3 Frontier, and that's the smartwatch from Samsung. Now, if you're not familiar with the Gear line, last, well, 2016, in August, Samsung announced two watches, so the Gear S3 Classic and the Gear S3 Frontier. The Gear S3 Frontier has two models. There's the Bluetooth model, and then there's also the LTE model. Now I'm in Canada, so I only get the Bluetooth model. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the watch and want to focus a little bit about the fitness size because I bought it to replace my Fitbit Blaze and I'm not really sold on the watch, so I'm going to return it, but I thought I'd make a video to just highlight the bad about the watch because there are a lot of videos out there talking about how great this watch is. And it is a great watch, it looks great, uh, a lot of people can't even tell that it's not an actual watch and it is a smart watch but for what I need it for and maybe for what you need it um, this might not be the watch for you so the first thing I want to talk about is charging the way you charge the watch is by placing it in its this included dock and it sits nicely in the dock the dock has a, a magnet at the back so it kind of keeps the watch in its place but you still have access to use all the functions on the watch while it's being charged it's really nice you put it at your desk or your nightstand and you're still able to see the time but also check a few things on the watch if you want to the problem that i have is that first it's really slow to charge so it's taking over two hours to charge and uh, i mean at this day and age with a 300 milliamp hour battery a little bit more than that 360 maybe it should charge a lot faster than that the second thing is that the dock itself takes micro usb cable again the watch was released in November 2016, so maybe USB Type-C wasn't as common. But the point is, if you're traveling somewhere and if you already have a USB Type-C phone, you're not going to be able to use the same cable, so you have to pack a separate cable for your watch. The second issue I have with this watch is the battery life. Now, Samsung says it has up to four days. I couldn't make it last more than two and a half days, but the two and a half days were only light usage. And I understand that the Gear S3 Frontier has a better battery life than other smartwatches, including the Apple Watch. But the thing is, when I bought this watch, I wanted to use it at the gym. And when I did use it at the gym for an hour, hour and a half, while the screen is on, I'm checking my heart rate and checking the time that passed or I'm timing my rest on the watch, the battery, by the time I was done, the battery life had dropped to about 60%, maybe 55 Which means that even if I go through the rest of the day with uh, the rest of that battery. I will have to charge it that night because it will die the next day and I'll end up having to charge it midday. So you end up charging it at night and that defeats the purpose. So realistically, if I'm using it at the gym, it's only a one day battery. On top of that, you could use Spotify on this watch, which is great in theory, and I'll tell you in a minute, but you could use Spotify, you could store your songs on there and you can connect your Bluetooth headphones to the watch and play music while you're exercising. You could leave your phone behind, but that drains the battery even more. So the two day battery, you could forget about it. If fitness is your main purpose, you're going to end up charging this watch every day. The third issue is Samsung Pay. Now I'm in Canada, as I mentioned, and I understand that we always get technology a little bit later than our neighbors in the US, but when you go on bestbuy.ca or wherever you go online and you look for this watch, it will mention that it's capable of doing wireless payments. And that's huge, but it doesn't. So Samsung Pay just became available for all the major banks here in Canada. Um, it was in beta mode for a while, but now it's available for everywhere. So if you have a Samsung phone, you can use Samsung Pay in Canada, but not on the watch. The Gear S3 Frontier is capable of making payments to NFC and MST. What MST does is it tricks the point of sale, so the machine that you're paying on, it tricks it to think that there's a magnetic stripe being swiped. It just generates a magnetic field and it just makes that machine think that a card has been swiped. And, and that's cool because you can then use the watch to pay with even older points of sale, so POS, instead of having to only use it on NFC enabled ones. Again, that's not available. So neither NFC nor MTS is available on this watch here in Canada. And again, that's a huge deal breaker and it's 
advertised everywhere that this watch has Samsung Pay capability, but it does not have it in Canada. So my fourth issue with this watch is the limited apps. Other than the apps that come with the watch and a few apps here and there, so including Spotify and Uber and tons of watch faces, there's not really much to be excited about. Absolutely nothing compared to uh, what the Apple Watch has. And I understand that this watch uses Tizen OS, so the Samsung's own a watch operating system, but I don't know if that's the price we pay because it's Tizen OS and it's arguably better than Android Wear, but we get limited apps. I'm not too excited about that. Which brings me to Spotify. Now I was very excited when I found out that Spotify works on the watch. I installed it right away. I logged in and I downloaded some of my playlists. So offline playlists are available, which is great. You take the watch, you go for a run, whatever you're doing, you keep your phone behind, you have your headphones and you don't need anything else. You have your GPS in the watch and you listen to your music. The problem is Spotify, when it works, drains your battery. And when it doesn't work, it doesn't work and it drains your battery. I put it on my watch, I downloaded my playlist, I went to the gym and I went on with my exercise. By the time I got home, as I mentioned earlier, the battery was around 50%. So not ideal, but I understand. I'm using the battery and I already covered that. There was one morning where I took the watch off of the charger it was at 100%, I started Spotify, but it kept loading and loading and loading, got stuck there. So I gave up and exited out and just carried on with my day. And halfway through the day, I looked down and my battery is at 50%. So when I checked on the phone, in the gear app on the phone, you could see the battery usage for the watch. And it showed me that Spotify was using 30% of the battery or something like that. So I ended up killing the app, but that issue wasn't just a one-time thing. I constantly kept getting this issue with Spotify. So sometimes it works and then it doesn't. And once it hangs, I found that the only way to fix it was to uninstall the app and bring it back on. So that's not really, I'm not sure if that's a Samsung issue or Spotify optimizing their app for the watch, but to me that's disappointing. So I can't really rely on it. My final issue is the S Health app. Now the app is available on the watch itself and on the phone. On the phone, the app is robust. It has a lot of options, a lot of features, and it allows you to add an option for weight management. So you log your weight today and then it tracks your activity and then you tell it later on what you weigh and it kind of gives you a graph. It's nice. Um, but coming from Fitbit, my issue was that the data from your watch to the S Health app on your phone wasn't synced right away. So for example, with my Fitbit, what I used to do is lay it in front of me if I'm on the treadmill and I don't have to look at the watch on my wrist. I could look at the Fitbit app and I could see my stats. So I could see the steps, the kilometers, I could see the heart rate and all that right there on the phone because it's automatically syncing. I didn't have to always look at my wrist. With the Gear S3 Frontier, that's not the case. So whenever I look at the S Health app, it takes a while for it to sync. I don't know if I'm missing an option or a feature, but I couldn't have it sync in real time. Now, if you look at the S Health app on your watch, it does track your activity and it does an okay job at that. Uh, it also tracks your activity automatically. So if you walk for more than 10 minutes, if you look at the watch, you'll start seeing a timer and it'll give you your pace. So that's all great. It'll also give you your heart rate, uh, your calories burnt and so on. It'll do the same thing for running, so it's smart enough to detect certain activities. And there's also an option to manually add certain activities. And when you look at the list, it's a little odd. It doesn't have everything, but it has random things like jumping jacks. So you're going to your watch to say, I'm going to do jumping jacks and start the timer, but I don't know how long are you going to do jumping jacks for. And there's squats and there are other few ones, but there's also treadmill and a rowing machine. And then there's other, which I'm assuming is the one that you'd use for weightlifting or other things. This is similar with the Fitbit, So, but with Fitbit, you don't see it on your watch. If you walk or if you run for over 10 minutes in Fitbit, it'll start tracking it, but you won't see it happening on your watch. And later on, you'll see it in the app um, on your phone. I've also found that the Gear S3 overestimates your calories burned. Now, all these fitness trackers that use optical heart rate sensors are not 100% accurate, but some of them are better than others and in my opinion Fitbit does a better job at tracking your heart rate on your wrist and estimating the calories burnt. I compared both of the watches to my Polar H10 uh, chest strap 
and the Fitbit was a little bit closer to the Polar than the Gear S3. Now, maybe the next version will be better, but at this stage, I'm not really ready to make the switch for the Gear S3, especially not at that price point in Canada. It's over $400 Canadian here for the Bluetooth version, and I did get it on sale, uh, but after taxes, it was about $400 again. Uh, but I don't think that's justifiable for what I want from this watch. And on top of all this, there should be a new watch coming in 2018 from Samsung. If you look back, the Gear S3 Frontier and Gear S3 Classic were announced in August 2016, then released in November 2016. And we were expecting the new version to come out in 2017, but instead we got the Gear Sport, which is not much of an upgrade, but it's just a change in style and targeting a new market segment. But the functions of that watch are very similar to the S3 Frontier. So there are similarities here and there, and there are differences, but from a sports tracking perspective, they both do the same thing, except that the Gear Sport um, allows you to swim and track your heart rate while you're swimming. Other than that, it was not a big upgrade, so there should be a new one coming this year. And there are some patents filed by Samsung and there are rumors going around. You could find some information on it online. So I'm going to hold off and wait to see what happens there and maybe get the new one. For now, I think I'm going to stick with my Fitbit Blaze or I might pick up the Fitbit Ionic and check that one out. If you'd like to see a video about that or if you want my opinion about that, please let me know in the comments below. I hope this video was helpful and it gave you more information on the watch if you're looking into buying it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I do try my best to answer all the comments and questions I get. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you later.